Eyewitness News presents Newsmakers, winner of the Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasting Award for Excellence in Public Affairs Programming, with your hosts, Jane Ann Bugda and Andy Mahalshik. Hello and welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Andy Mahalshik. And I'm Jane Ann Bugda. Inspiring youngsters to grow academically and socially is one of the goals of the SHINE program. Today we'll take a closer look at the positive impact the after school program has on those students and gives them the opportunity to shine. We'll introduce you to our guest and our discussion will begin when this edition of Newsmakers begins right after this. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugged along with Andy Mahalsik and the topic of our conversation today is the Shine After School program. We know a lot about it. I know a lot about it as a, an advisory board member to the Luzerne County Shine. And today we want to share the good news of what's going on in our schools after school. And to help us share the good news, our, our panel, we are joined today by Carol Nicholas, who's the Luzerne County Director of Shine, Rachel Miller Strucco, who's the Carbon County Shine Director, and also joining us is uh, Senator John Udicek, who is off also an author. So we'll be talking about his <laughs> book that he dedicated to Shine. And we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot of video to show you. And we're going to start by our first question for our viewers who may not know what Shine is. Can we have a little bit of an explanation? What is Shine? Well, I'll start. Okay. Um, Shine is really an after school program. It's a STEM based program. We have, uh, sorry, sorry. It's a um, STEM-based program with a couple of different components. We have a pre-K and a kindergarten component, which is where we do home visiting. We have <coughs> an elementary component and a middle school component, which is an after-school program. We meet for 12 hours a week, four days a week, and we follow STEM-based programming and um, <coughs> project-based curriculum. <coughs> and when did the SHINE program begin? Now, it started first in the Carbon County, uh, Schuylkill County area, and then moved over to Luzerne County. So tell us a little bit about so that. So we have been in existence for 14 years in Carbon and Schuylkill County. It started when a group of caring individuals really looked at Carbon County and found out that we had nothing between the hours of three and six for children. And we know those are super critical hours, especially for at-risk children. So um, we got together and we wrote really our first 21st century grant, which is our main source of funding for three districts. And over the last 14 years, we went from three to 11 districts in both Carbon and Schuylkill County and serving about a thousand children in those two counties alone. And the genesis of SHINE itself, how did that come about? Was there a national program that you were able to have a blueprint or did you start it from from birth? So the past director, to be quite honest with you, um, really started SHINE from an idea that she had and she had other people involved as well in a, a strong county commissioner, a strong state senator, a representative um, and Keith McCall who was there prior and really together from that small Carbon County this huge um, program came about to be quite honest. And Rachel's being modest that uh, the one that started it all was uh, Jeannie Miller, her mom, <laughs> who inspired me uh, <coughs> and Congressman Barletta to get involved. Uh, Senator uh, Rhodes from Schuylkill County was one of the early supporters uh, of the program uh, and many of the folks that worked with Senator Rhodes uh, in the uh, General Assembly, uh, Republican and Democrat, really were helpful to me in finding the funding to start uh, uh, the Luzerne County Shine program and to fund, properly fund, uh, the Carbon and Schuylkill County Shine. So uh, w Jeannie Miller and that genesis of this idea, of course there were after school programs all over the country for, mm -hmm. for many, many years. What makes Shine special to me is that it is built on a STEAM based curriculum. That's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. But it's evidence based outcome driven. <coughs> we have results. What uh, uh, Jeannie and Rachel have been able to do uh, in carbon is go over the last 12 years and you see the percentages that come out in attendance up over 90 percent uh, academic achievement up over 90 percent and parental engagement family engagement up over 90 percent and we're starting to see those mm -hmm. early numbers in the shine program which started in 2015 right. fully funded in 2016 so we're in the early stages 
but between the two programs, <coughs> you have over a thousand students, a thousand families that are getting a quality educational experience because of Shine. The uh, curriculum itself is STEM based, but it's also based on high priority occupations in Pennsylvania. So we really make sure the curriculum that we're driven is what's going on in P Pennsylvania, and we're really getting students ready when they graduate to either enter the workforce or an associate degree or four year degree. So we want to make sure that we're relevant in the curriculum that we're delivering in the classroom. Because isn't that key, being relevant? Because there are great programs over the years around the country, mm -hmm. but then the, the children are, are, are age graduated from it or get to a point where now where do I go? I don't have the skills or the education to stay here or to fill the needs of the community. So you, you have to, that I would think was a, is a key player here. Key and I partner. think one of the best things that we probably have done was really work with the Career and Technical Institute as our, um, our Career and Technical, um, our middle school program. That was really a really smart thing to do. We're able to utilize those centers 365 days a year, all the technical areas. We use the industry professionals. We utilize the academic teachers as well. And that has been wonderful um, for the program itself. And the beauty of Shine in terms of, of how efficient this program is, whether it's the Wooksbear CTC or the Carbon CTC, all the investments that taxpayers have made in the equipment in these facilities, all we ask the schools to do, we don't ask the schools to fund the SHINE program, we just ask them to turn the lights on. And we were able to take advantage, and that way you're stretching those tax dollars. The other thing I wanted to note in terms of whether it's high priority jobs or building a strong educational curriculum, we have tremendous host organizations, Lehigh Carbon Community College and Carbon School and Wilkes University uh, here in Luzerne. Having uh, the advantage, uh, particularly with Wilkes, that has a college of education and the resources that we have to make sure that we're building the right curriculums to make sure these, uh, these kids are not only ready for the classroom, they're ready for a career. And some of the things that we do and when we choose our, our different projects in our curriculum is we try to infuse 21st century skills for all of our students. So those won't only benefit them at school, but benefit them in life. Things like communication, collaboration, creative thinking. Those are the things that students will need to succeed in school, but also in life as they choose their careers and work toward those. I think it's interesting when you look at the video and the photos of the children that are involved in the uh, projects after school, they're all smiling and they're all having a good time, but they're learning. And they're involved in some pretty intense projects. Tell us a little bit about some of the projects that they get yeah. involved in. Well, in our elementary school, we're doing a lot of robotics and coding. We use products like the Dash and, Dash and Dot, which are here with us today. <coughs> we do some circuitry work. We do some work on entrepreneurism, trying to teach students about what's involved in building a business from the ground up, the math, the science, the, the art of that. We try to infuse some artistic projects with our students too. Many of the schools have given up a lot of art activities, so we'll use products like art and history and do some things with them there. Um, year end, we work our students toward derby cars. So they're building, designing steering systems, braking systems, and developing a derby car that they will ride and race each other at the end of the year. All of those things are really tied to those high priority jobs, but they're having fun, like you said. A lot of times they're really not aware that they're learning um, because they're having so much fun doing it. And research shows that kids learn the best with a start and a finish to every product, pr uh, project. So we really take them through the whole gamut, just like it would be an industry. Or um, if they're building a car, you know, working um, at an automobile factory. So it's really important that we start the project. We talk about the careers involved. Where can you go um, to get those degrees? We, you know, everything is completely hands-on. The design aspect using Tinkercad, bringing in engineers to physically build um, the car with the students. So so, super exciting. Yeah, having great corporate partners. Uh, mm -hmm. Reference the advisory board. A lot of the companies in the area not only helping us on the funding side, but helping us on the technical side. Mm -hmm. Having a scientist and engineer might be the first time some of these students get to meet someone in that field, and it sparks an idea and sparks a passion. And they're on the path to a science degree. Or they're on the path to a science career. <coughs> That's the excitement of Shine. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about what is the criteria for a student to uh, get involved in the SHINE program. Well, we're looking at students in school districts that have a need, first of all, both an academic as well as a socioeconomic need. 
the, t the students in our program are referred by either their teachers or their guidance counselors. We like to say that it's students who need a little extra push for their education. We want to get them excited about school again. We want to get them achieving. We want to get those students who are middle of the road kind of up a level. And we want to get them really more than anything excited about going to school during the day and starting to think about and focus on their futures. So it's really a very open, open referral system. And how, I guess, to go back to, to the beginning of our conversation, Parental Engagement Center, you're talking about that. We all often hear times in, in, in the last, say, decade or so, well, the parents aren't involved and, you know, the kids are latchkey kids, whatever. How do you get those parents involved? Because we're all very busy these days. Right. How do you get them involved? Uh, well, society has changed. Uh, very few par uh, parents uh, live and work in the same community or near the school. Uh, so there are challenges, and that's, uh, as Rachel mentioned earlier, that, that 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 6 or to 8, very challenging time for a student. The way uh, that the Luzerne County Shine Program, the Carbon School Co uh, Counties, their Shine Program, they bring the parents into the school. They bring the parents into a family night, uh, whether that's a dinner with their children or to work through a, a project. That parental engagement goes so far. I think Carbon School Co County, they have one of the best stories uh, that I tell about Shine all the time, about a mother, a single mom coming in, wanting to make sure her child had a shot at a high school education and a college education. She didn't have a high school diploma. She was inspired by the teachers there in, in, in Carbon. She went back, got her GED, went on to college, and became a social worker. Wow. And now her son's on a path to a college degree. So talk about changing the trajectory of a family. Uh, and education has the power to do that. And thankfully, we have great programs like the SHINE program that can inspire families uh, to reach for a better education attainment level. One of the things we do with our families when they register their students is we ask them, are, what are some of the goals you'd like to work on? Or what are some of the resources maybe we could steer you <coughs> in? So we're steering our families toward food banks. We're steering them toward LIHEAP resources, toward GEDs, and an opportunity to work toward that. So our program is able to get them those resources, help set those things up, and really work with the families. We also do have a monthly family night at every one of our centers, and that's what the senator was alluding to. They come and they have dinner with our families. We put them through some project-based learning. We use each night to, to really talk about resources. So one night we'll talk about opportunities at Luzerne County Community <coughs> College. One night we'll talk about um, what does the United Way have to offer and how do you connect up with those resources. So we try to make sure our families are served well. And we're really about empowering the, the families because we realize at some point uh, Shine, they might not be in Shine, but we want to make sure we help the parents so they can end up helping their students. Um, Common Core is such a difficult thing currently. I mean, I have two children, math, teaching Common Core, so <laughs> helping the parents learn how to help their children do their homework is great for our families. I mean, that empowers them. And that the home visit portion of it, I, was just gonna I, ask I think, about think home really visiting, empowers yes. the family. That's, that's not only about getting a child prepared uh, for the classroom, that's also about getting parents prepared uh, to, uh, to support their children's education. The parent or the guardian needs to be present during the home visit and we'll spend an hour a week with a student and we're developing an individualized instruction plan for those pre-k and kindergarten students with the goal of really kindergarten readiness or first grade readiness the parent sits along with the project we leave teachable items for the parent to work on once we leave so that they can continue those lessons they have an opportunity to work with our home visitor and ask questions about what are ways <coughs> i can motivate my child what are things i can do they don't like to do this so we do provide a lot of resources a lot of guidance for them. It's really their one-on-one -on -one opportunity to work with an educator. And it's really a holistic approach because prior to any of the students entering any of our centers, we really gather all the data prior. So if they've taken PSSAs, the report card grades, we've already spoke to guidance counselors. So we have a, we formulate a plan and we really work the plan um, the whole year. So you, ha you have an idea, sort of a profile of where the student is or, or, or mm -hmm. what their status of their education is, but also maybe what interest they may have based on that profile. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's great because uh, our districts in Carbon and Schuylkill, we're really committed. We have committed superintendents, committed administrators, guidance counselors, and we are one big team. And we know that working together as formal educators and informal educators, we're stronger together for those those students. And we become, um, it were a necessary element in all those districts in Carbon County. And you know, those classroom teachers like that because it helps them 
um, you know, during their school day. Because yep. sometimes, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, I, I, we've, we've done a lot of stories on school districts and, you know, good, bad, and the ugly situations. Sometimes teachers feel like they're on an island upon themselves, despite the support they may get from the administration. But sometimes they seem overwhelmed. Does this help ease that burden or cushion it a little bit? I think it does. I mean, we work very closely with the classroom teachers asking for input. We want to know what are they struggling with today? Are they getting better at some of the things we're working on? Can we offer more math work for them if math is an area that they're right. having problems on? And one of the things that, you know, we talk about stories, my favorite stories are when we talk to a classroom teacher and they'll say, you know, one of our students would never get to up to go to the board, would never write on the board, never brought their homework. And after Shine, having someone help them with their homework, understand any of their concepts, they became a lot more sure of themselves, and the teacher was so happy for the one day they came in, they raised their hand, they <coughs> walked to the board, did their problem, and their whole attitude towards school changed, as well as their other students in the class, because now they looked at that student and they were part of that group. So we're proud of things like that that we can't always measure, too. Talk a little bit about your teams, the, uh, who are with the children in the after-school program. So all our teachers currently at Carbon Schuylkill are classroom teachers. So they work in the classroom during the day, which makes the um, information exchange so much easier when during the school day, you know, they're in that school and then in the afternoon they come work for us. Um, and a lot of them have backgrounds in science. Um, a lot of them have spe special ed teachers, um, reading teachers. So it makes it um, a lot easier when they're working with those students in the classroom with that type of background. In Luzerne County, all of our teachers are also certified teachers. Some of them don't actually work in the building that they're working in Shine. So for some of them, it's an opportunity to move even across district lines to work in Shine and to share their resources and learn a little bit more. So we try to mix them up a little bit. Well, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about the Shine program. We're going to talk about this book. And you're watching Newsmakers. You can find information on today's program on pahomepage.com, we're under the Newsmakers link. And you're watching Newsmakers. We are a proud recipient of three Pennsylvania Association Awards of Excellence in Public Affairs Programming. Welcome back to Newsmakers. Jane Ann Bugged along with Andy Mahalsik, and we are talking about the Shine After School Program. We are joined by Carol Nicholas. She is with the Luzerne County Shine Program. Rachel Miller Strucco with the uh, Carbon <laughs> County, Schuylkill County Shine Program, and Senator John Udicek, who is a champion for the uh, Shine Program. So much inspired, he wrote a book. And the book is entitled, We Saved the Bees and Butterflies. So tell us a little bit about this. Well, you've heard that Shine is about collaboration. It's mm -hmm. about working together, hands-on projects. And uh, uh, I'll give credit to Caroline Jones, who was uh, uh, working as an intern for me, uh, that said, if we can get a Republican and a Democrat to work together, <laughs> it'll illustrate the power of Shine. And uh, my good friend, uh, the former uh, Congressman Lou Barletta, Caroline Jones, and I uh, put this idea together. Uh, we wanted to demonstrate uh, the importance of Shine. We wanted to illustrate uh, how important it is to our communities. And, and we wrote together this wonderful book uh, about Rosie and Liam, two Shine students uh, who, who come up with the idea to research why uh, the bee and, and, and butterfly populations were declining uh, in their schoolyard. And, uh, and their teacher, Mrs. Smith, uh, gives them a research project. They use STEAM-based principles. Uh, to uh, put together a project to save the bees and butterflies. And they also bring in Dr. Honeychurch, of course, <laughs> what, a, what an appropriate name for a professor from Wilkes University to build this beautiful bee and butterfly garden and the children of Shine save the bees and butterflies. So it's a happy ending, a great story, and it's a great story uh, about a wonderful, wonderful program, the Shine program. Now I see you had a book signing and I mm -hmm. saw the, the uh, Students clapping, whatever, yeah. uh, there and had a good time. <laughs> what kind of response are you getting from uh, the public, the, the, especially the kids? I, I, I think the cheering and the smiles were, the, were related to the cookie project. <laughs> they got to build their own cookies. Uh, but it, it's been great response. The, the children uh, love it. I have four daughters of my own, and they were, they were there uh, that night. Uh, they're my uh, toughest critics, uh, and they love the book, uh, and I hope, I hope children all over. Uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania enjoy the book and I hope 
that it inspires more and more people to uh, take an interest in Shine and support the Shine program. And where can folks get this book? It, it's available at Barnes and Noble. All the proceeds uh, from the book go to the Shine program in Carbon and Schuylkill and in Luzerne. And the was published through a grant of the Edie Chack uh, Family Lighthouse Fund from the Luzerne Foundation. So there's no cost to the Shine program. All the revenue will go back into the Shine program again about raising awareness in a fun and unique way uh, to inspire the kids. And, and Carol was telling me earlier, as, as, as the kids are getting the books in the Shine program, they're so excited. They want to know when the movie's coming out. So oh, I don't, wow. There we'll you see, go. I, I, we'll have I was going to gonna ask about book two, but you're moving on to movies. <laughs> we'll <go> to movies. <laughs> <It's> movies. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit, too, about how sh um, the SHINE program gives back to the community, what the students do to give back to the community. Well, one of the things we do in Luzerne is we have a project called Giving Back Through Engineering. And we have our students choose a community organization that they'd like to work toward. So last year they worked with um, Blue Chip Farms, <coughs> and the students used their 3D printers to make dog bone cookie cutters and they designed a recipe and made <coughs> dog bones to give out to the dogs. They also made raised dog beds and raised dog bowls. They soldered them together and, and assembled them and then we brought the woman in from Blue Chip. They learned a little bit about the community and why that was important and then they gave those out. And then last year they made no sew blankets, the ones where they're big fleece blankets and you tie them together. And um, they donated those to Ruth's Place and this year they've also donated them to the Victims Resource Center. So it's important for them to understand um, empathy and how to give back to their community and how a little bit goes a very long way. And I don't think students get enough <coughs> opportunities in day school to do that. So we like to incorporate that into our curriculum also. And I, th I think that's key because we, uh, you, you know, when you're talking about in today's society and you know, the more mature folks like me and some others in, in our newsroom, we say, how could that happen or why aren't we doing this? But the kids are, we, in, in our generation was get it done yesterday. Now it's get it done last month. In other words, they're, they're not really connecting with the needs of the community. Those who may be less fortunate or they don't know what's out there. So I think service learning is one of the mm -hmm. most powerful tools that as educators we can utilize in the classroom. I've really found specifically with our middle school and high school, if you ask students about their community and what needs to be changed, they can articulate it um, very easily. And Shenandoah um, High School is a perfect example. Shenandoah is a tough area at times, um, but we really worked with our high school kids and they looked at the area and one of the things was they did not like, there was a lot of garbage. They had a walking path that needed to be um, changed, so we built all the benches, we used a 3D printer, we physically, so they changed that. But the kids directed that project and the majority of children will be able to identify what they want to change in their community or their school. And it's one of the most powerful things I can we do as educators is to give them that and let them really explore that. And our students took that a step further. Last year when we had the large high-rise fire in Wilkes-Barre, the kids wanted to do something for the victims of that high-rise fire. So they also decided to additionally make more blankets for those people who were displaced. And they also put together cookie tins that they made themselves. For many of these students, it was the first time they had ever really baked cookies. They had worked on the recipes, did the measuring, put those together, and then we took them over to the high-rise. And they were able to give them to those people who were displaced from their homes, and they felt that connection to their community. And again, that service learning is so important. And, and the students of Shine are really the best advocates for, for Shine. When you talk to a child, you had mentioned earlier, and you see the smile on the mm -hmm. face and the pride in their voice and in their heart. When a child has pride in their work mm -hmm. and pride in their community yes. and pride in their family, they're gonna be a, uh, they're gonna be a great kid. And, and, and that's what Shine is all about. <coughs> Inspiring, giving a sense of pride in community in place and in and, and in in their work and their education, and every child that I speak to uh, when I visit one of the Shine centers, uh, it it's inspiring. It really is inspiring to see how this program is changing lives in northeastern Pennsylvania. If someone's out there watching the show right now and says, you know, I'd like to come in there and talk to these young people about what I do. Are you open to that? Do you welcome people to come to your after school program? We what, certainly what do they do. need to do? They need to reach out, I think, either to me or to Rachel. Um, we're looking for people who have a career that they'd like to share. 
Um, we give them the opportunity to talk to students about really their pathway. What are some of the things that they did <coughs> in school? What are some of the classes they thought were very important? And then really, what do you need to be to be an engineer? What does that mean? We hear that term a lot, but we have them explain in real words for children, what are the different kinds of engineering? Do you need to be good at math? Do you need to be good at science? How do you prepare yourself for that career? So we're always looking for community members to share their expertise with Shine. I know time is ticking very quickly here. Very quick question. Uh, what about we have, you know, a large retired uh, folks out, a lot of retired population, and they have expertise from A to Z, all kind of fields. Maybe they're watching this program now saying, boy, I can help out there. What, how could they get, could, to look, look forward to uh, uh, the, the, those kind of folks? I would say that'd be wonderful. We are always looking for volunteers and people with expertise. I think that's a great community to tap. So reading comprehension is a big issue s with some of our students. So anytime we can get people in and have the students read, and we've go gone to a nursing homes or assisted care facilities, mm -hmm. and we just take the students and they read um, to them, and they both love it. It's great for both the student and the person. We have about a minute left, so I just want to ask quickly, where do you see the SHINE program in five years from now? It's going to continue to grow. I think we're already seeing interest in other counties. Uh, Rachel could speak to that as, as it grows. My vision as a legislator of where I would like to see it go, I would like to see it be part of basic education in all Pennsylvania schools. Uh, we need after school programs. I'm part of the After School Alliance. Uh, it, I've seen the power of the SHINE program. It needs to be replicated in all schools so all children can be inspired by after school learning. Well, we hope we inspired you today to be involved in the SHINE program. We will have information on the SHINE program on pahomepage.com under the Newsmakers link, and there you can find out information about Luzerne County SHINE and Carbon and Schuylkill County SHINE and information on where to find the book. We want to thank you for joining us today and for being thank champions you. for children in thank our you. area. Thank you for the and opportunity. Great job. Keep up the good work. For Andy Mahalshik and everyone behind the scenes, I'm Jane Ann Bugda. We want to thank you so much for making Newsmakers part of your day, and we'll talk again next time. <laughs>